Hello everyone, this is Crota giving you a shoutcast and game one in a series between Dragon vs. Elphi here on Ohana. Dragon vs. Elphi, this is going to be a Terran vs. Protoss matchup as we see Dragon has spawned in the top left hand side of the map as the red Terran player. Meanwhile, we see Elphi spawning as the blue Protoss on the other side of the map on the bottom right. Now, normally this map um, does favor Zerg just a little bit just because that's what a lot of the Zerg players have been playing or use, using and choosing when they lose a map. The third base is a little bit difficult to take, but then again, why am I even talking about that as this is not a Zerg matchup at all? Now, in a Protoss versus Terran matchup, what you really have to be careful about as a Terran player is the fact that this ramp is so close to the main entrance here. If a Protoss player is able to get up onto the get up onto here and start laying down force fields on this ramp, any reinforcements that you have trying to come down the ramp will pretty much get stuck. Then the Protoss player can just hug this far edge here and then try to put pressure here. Now, Terran players could try to utilize perhaps two bunkers here, or maybe even a bunker here and a bunker here to make sure that that doesn't happen, as that does tend to throw a wrench in the works as Elphi now moving down with a probe and it doesn't look like Elphi is going to be going for a forge fast expansion. It looks like it will be that typical opening assimilator followed by Cybernex Core and then a, a, a simulator followed by Pylon and then Cybernex Core excuse me as we also see Dragon going for a Curious Refinery and perhaps and I don't get to see or cast that many games on Ohana but perhaps this is a little bit of a change in, in the map selection or the map choice where the players try to go a little bit further into just overall tech. A probe is wandering around on the inside here. Both of these players going down a little bit more of a tech heavy path op opting to get gas a little bit earlier. Now if you guys cannot tell I am still on the road. Unfortunately all of my professional recording equipment is back at home. I will also be upgrading that equipment as well so you guys might hear or notice a very large increase in just overall sound quality in the coming weeks. Cybernex Core already about halfway done. We are going into a reactor here and this is a curious move. We are going into a reactor and we are still harvesting gas. So with this perhaps Dragon is looking to go for perhaps a factory play in just a moment and if he does go for a factory and it, he could try to go for a little bit of Hellion harassment, but then again, I can't really imagine that Hellions would be all that powerful or all that useful, especially with Stalkers. Zealot now making his way down across the map. We could perhaps be seeing the double training of Marines. There is a second barracks up, hidden off to the top by Dragon. So Dragon is going to be going into two racks play, going for that tech lab now, and perhaps going to be training up a whole bunch of Marines with Stim and Combat Shield. The front door has pretty much been completed. Dragon now taking a look around, making sure that there are no destructible rocks. One thing to note, there are destructible rocks here for um, to easily take this third. So perhaps there are different versions of the third as we now see Elphi going into a Nexus at the natural expansion. Overall Harvester count, 22 probes versus 20 SCVs. Triple training of Marines though, and also utilization of that stim pack. So we should have a very strong marine heavy army in just a moment as Dragon has now transitioned into double refinery and we may be seeing a bit of a timing push coming in from Dragon as he is training a whole bunch of marines, should have stim and should also have medevax very shortly. Taking a look at what Elphi is doing, Elphi is going along the more practical route. He is going for that Nexus at the natural and if he's able to hence fend off whatever timing attack that Elphi is trying to, or sorry, that Dragon is trying to go for, then Elphi will be in a very beautiful position. So far we are seeing a whole bunch of Marines and this is going to be a bit of an issue as there's already a probe in the middle of the map. We already see uh, as well that Elphi is going into, or Elphi or Elphi, going into the Observer. So the Protoss will have observers and detection into the, his opponent's face as we are now seeing a starport and what is this? A tech lab being added on. I cannot imagine that he would actually try to be going for ravens unless he wants to get a raven first to shoot down the observer 
But as soon as the observer has already spotted this number of Marines, I'm pretty sure that LLP is going to be playing on the defensive. No, this is going to be Siege Tanks. All right, Siege Tanks Dragon is definitely doing, or it looked like he was definitely doing a timing push, as you now see Siege Tanks being added. No Siege Tech just quite yet. Still a lot of Marines being trained. Stim Pack is about to be completed, as you now see the Marines are wandering around. And oh, the Observer just misses. Nope. Did catch sight of those Marines in just a second, trying to catch where they're going to go, trying to see, and it does spot this squadron of Marines here. One Observer doing a good job, good navigation, good map awareness by Elfie. Now, more Siege Tanks are being added here. We are going to be going into one medevac, perhaps two Siege Tech now being added on as well. Very, very um, tight spending, as you can see, that Dragon is, pretty much knows his build very well. Meanwhile, Elfie is going to be going off of Stalkers and Sentries try to, to try to fend off this attack as Combat Shield now being added. We, it should be about 70 seconds when this next attack does come in. Observer now trying to make its way across. You can see that there is one Zealot off here and it is going to be going up against a whole bunch of Stalkers. This could be bad news as the Stalkers, there's some force fields. The Marines stepping away just in time. A Zealot does get taken down. As a seed check now moving forward, there is one medevac, beautiful stim by Dragon, making sure to not stim all of the Marines, only a few of them, as now we are going to see this siege tank Marine army try and make a move. Siege check needs about another five seconds or so. Uh, it gets a little bit too early here as the siege tank takes a little bit of a blast. And now, here we go, one siege tank, two siege tank, now knocking on the front door. And, oh, another force field just in time. SCVs, Marines are already up on the top side of the ramp. And how much damage can be dealt? Probes may fall here. Yes, some probes do fall. As the Marines have to be careful, they are stuck on the wrong side of a force field. SCVs are here on the high ground. The medevac is very low. Needs to be careful. As the siege tanks now cleaning up this nexus. All right, it looks very bad for Elfie as a couple probes will get taken down. Siege tanks now looking to get in position. Are they going to be able to siege up? Yes, they will. And now here they go, walking up onto the high ground. So the Marines walking up onto the high ground. There is one Colossus in this group. Marines now need to be careful as well. Well, that one Colossus could whip and tear through all of those Marines rather easily. But there is now a siege tank on the high ground. And with this robotics bay getting taken down, oh, that could be bad. Oh, it looks like the, the Colossus is not going to get removed from the queue. But it, there is still one Colossus at this point. Dragon with a one base all in here on Ohana. Now doing a tactical retreat. All right, a tactical retreat here. Um, he did damage, but I don't know if that was a good move. Dragon now currently a sub was supply block. Siege tanks trying to hold the low ground. We see that this one assimilator will get taken down here, but this is gonna buy time for a new Colossus to be trained and then possibly a third one as well. Didn't take down the robotics facility. If he had done that, I perhaps could have um, could have believed in LL in, into that tactical retreat, but now he is retreating. He is building up a new command center inside his base, but he doesn't have any weapons upgrades. Let's take a look at the harvester count. It is 35 probes to 28, excuse me, 28 SCVs. And now a new Nexus might just be established here in just a moment. The Observer keeping track. Colossi, two Colossi, Zealots, and Stalkers holding the bottom Zelnaga Tower. And this is really going to come down to whether or not Dragon made the right decision when not charging up that ramp. He didn't really deal that much damage. He didn't get the economic advantage that he needed. And now we are going to see per perhaps some probes do a little bit of long distance mining. And I really like this play. If you take a look at Elfie's, yes, Elfie pretty much has exact saturation inside the main, knowing that these probes doing long distance mining um, will add a little bit more. You can see now the Stalkers and the Zealots are backing off. Colossus is coming in. You can see that the Marines, Vikings, Dragon, maybe have to be trying to come back in with superior numbers. But I really wish he would stop with the siege tank production. He really needs to either double train Vikings or double train Medivacs and go for a lot more Marines and Marauders. It looks like that Orbital Command will be established here in just a moment as we are seeing 
only one medevac is in this group. One medevac is not going to really be able to heal up all of that damage, but there are a good number of Vikings, four Vikings, to try to counter the two Colossi. Extended Thermal Lance Range about to be completed, though, and that may be the problem. Vikings now going after some units. The Marines are trying to stiff. There's a beautiful force field finishing off the rest of those units there. Zealots now have to be careful, though, as we may see the Marines and Marauders going to take down these backdoor rocks. Oh, the backdoor rock utilization could be the, the difference here. That is a lot of siege tanks, six siege tanks. Is it going to be effective enough? Siege tanks are sieging, and here we go. Here's an engagement. Dragon coming back, and it looks like Dragon did enough damage by, and now it's going to be focusing on the last Colossus. The last Colossus, even with extended thermal lance range, not going to be enough. He did enough damage, and it looks like he was able to save up all of his units. There is the GG Dragon taking game one. I really, really was concerned that Dragon um, pulled back a little bit too quickly, not dealing enough damage. He was able to take down the robotics bay, not the robotics facility, but still, it bought him time to re macro up a lot of marines and also get those siege tanks. Siege tanks are a unit that you don't see very often in, in Terran versus Protoss, so I was surprised by this, and perhaps Elfie is going to come back with a better scenario uh, let's go ahead and give me give you my face on this. A better scenario or a better strategy overall. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed game one in this series. Stay tuned for game two.